Hey, this is Jeremy from Production Den. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through how I record electric guitar in FL Studio using the Native Instruments Guitar Rig plugin. If you're interested in getting more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so that you can get alerted when new videos are published. Now let's jump in. So let me walk you through the equipment that I'm using to record electric guitar in FL Studio. I have a Fender Telecaster guitar, a quarter inch cable that is plugged into a simple USB audio interface that is then routed into my computer and FL Studio. And then the only other thing that I'm using is actually the Native Instruments Guitar Rig plugin. So now that we're inside FL Studio, I'm gonna take you into the mixer to show you how I set up Guitar Rig on an empty insert track and then how I go through the process of tracking out the guitar. So bring up the mixer channel by pressing F9, and then you'll see here on channel five, I actually selected from this drop down menu and selected input two, which is the input that the guitar is plugged into. And then I loaded in guitar rig five. Um, and you can do this by dropping down on the slot and then loading in that plugin. Um, so let me bring up the plugin, and these are the settings that I have for the part that I'm going to record. I had already recorded it previously, and I'll let you hear a little sample of what that is, but I wanted to show you how I'd recreate that if I were doing it from scratch. So this is a little bit of what that sounds like right now. So you get the point. Uh, it's kind of a really chill, laid back guitar vibe. So um, when I came into Guitar Rig, I actually had to recreate this sound for the most part. So I came in and I put a noise reduction plug in, put in a, a basic distortion pedal, um, and I used the components over here and just kind of built this thing mostly from scratch. Um, so again, started out with noise reduction, started out with the jump, amplifier here here's the settings that i use for that drive is pretty light the volume is pretty light on that and then i have it running into a compressor pedal which is kind of evening out the tone a little bit and then i run it into a tape echo and then into a uh, little reflector and the reverb on this is set to all very wet instead of very dry which gives me more kind of a room sound, like a much spacier in the background kind of a sound for the guitar. And that's the, those are the settings that I use for that. So when I come in to record a part, I'll usually bring up this tuner first um, and then go through the process of tuning the guitar to make sure that it's in tune and ready to record. And then once that's done, I come back out here to the playlist and you'll see um, that I usually start about a bar ahead of where I'm gonna actually start recording. And that just gives me a little bit of runway before I actually have to start playing anything. So uh, once I have the, the file set up that I wanna record, then it gives me about a four count before it actually starts recording. Um, so usually when I come into a project, I will set up a, a default folder to record all the audio files into. And the way that I do that is I'll press F10, I'll go over to project and it has this data folder at the top. I will click on this icon and then I will navigate down to the drive that I'm working off of for making songs. And let's say this is called Sad Blues 02 for whatever reason. So that will be the new folder that everything gets saved to and it'll bring up dialog box that says, hey, would you like to save the current project? And that means it's just wants to save an FLP file into that new folder that you set up. Say yes to that. And then now, from now on, every time I right click on the mixer track, it will bring up to that specific folder and then I can name this whatever. So I'm gonna call this electric, um, like a low lead. And I just like to name it with the instrument and then maybe a little bit of context for what it is that I'm recording so that it, it helps jog my memory when I'm working with the parts later on. Um, and I'll just say save. 
So now that track is armed for recording. And then all that I have to do is go up here to this record button, make sure that the audio is checked. And then when I'm actually ready to record, which I'll show you here in a little bit, I'll press the R button and the R button will just go ahead and, and start the countdown to actually record. And then I will play the part over top of this. So in this case, since I've already recorded this, I would mute this other track out so I don't hear it. And then I would play that part again with the new audio. And there's two ways that you can actually record this audio. And I wanna show you this really quickly, which is, is kind of interesting. You can either do post or pre. So if you look here on this insert track, you'll see that there's this orange highlight right here that says post. And what that means, it's going to record the audio sending it through the guitar rig. But you can also say pre, and what that'll do is record the audio that's just coming into the interface, but not actually through guitar rig. So you could get the clean guitar signal. And what that allows you to do is then change the effects afterwards in guitar rig to maybe shape the tone a little bit differently if you don't quite like the setting or the sound that you got. The only problem that I see with this is that you take up a little bit more CPU because you're constantly running a plug-in rather than having printed that effect to the audio ahead of time. And usually when I'm working pretty quickly in a project, I like to go ahead and do the post. So that way it just goes ahead and records that um, tone, the guitar tone that you selected in Guitar Rig to the actual audio file. And I like to do that for my projects because I'll have multiple takes of guitar and I change the tone a little bit between the different takes to get some different flavors but that gives me the flexibility to not have to load up multiple instances of guitar rig or remember those settings or save those presets or whatever. So that's the workflow that I like to use when I'm recording is actually do post. Um, it forces you to commit to the sound but it gives you the ability to uh, quickly go between takes and change the tone of the guitar. And you can always save those presets. If you like a certain preset, you can come back to it. But that's the way that I usually work in um, this guitar rig plugin inside of FL Studio. So I'll show you right now just basically how I go through that recording process. <laughs> And if you don't get everything right on the first take, don't worry about it. I often have to go back and take a couple different takes in order to get the, the sound or the tone or the playing the way that I want it to be. So don't feel bad if you have to do that yourself. Well, I hope that was helpful for you to be able to see the workflow that I use to record electric guitar in FL Studio using the Native Instruments Guitar Rig plugin. If you have any comments or questions, leave those in the comment section below. If you like this content, subscribe and turn on your notification bell and I will see you in the next round.